Good afternoon. How are y'all? Everybody enjoy their lunch? Yeah. That was an awesome cookie that I had. I know that. Um, I'm going to talk to you today about delayed births. And one of the things that I wanted to tell you about, I think this is changing. There we gave you the code section. But basically, let me just tell you this. As judges, probate, clerks, you all know that someone's gonna come in every week and say, hey, I'm about to turn 62 years old and I don't have a birth certificate and I need to collect Social Security, right? Or my favorite one is, I'm going on a cruise in a few weeks and I've never gotten a birth certificate. And as Donna Moore pointed out, Miss Annie Bay Bates, same thing, she needed a delayed birth certificate. So what is a delayed birth certificate? Basically, it's when you're born in the state of Georgia and you do not have a birth certificate before your first birthday, then a delayed birth certificate has to be filed. We've given you a copy of the form, and just in case you wonder, do you have the correct form? It's 3908. And if you will, fill out the top portion but always remember that on line number seven, that's the signature of the registrar or the parent. Right under that, number nine, that is where it has to be notarized. And then the seal goes directly under that, so make sure that is correct. Attach your evidence or your documentation and be sure you send this in to the state with all of your documentation. So this form and all of your documentation must come to us at the state. I wanted to give you some helpful tips. What exactly does the documentation have to show? The documented evidence is required to show the registrar's name and the date of birth or age. All documents must show that the date the original record was made and by whom. All original documents will be returned to the applicant upon review. And this last one is very important. Any altered records that show incorrect information will not be accepted. And I like this slide because this is an easy way for you to know which items you can accept. So we're going to send you out the PowerPoint, I believe, is what I've been told. And so be sure you keep a copy of this at your desk. Put it on the wall, whatever you need, because y'all are all the time wondering what exactly can I take. For example, the hospital record is an example of one you can use. It's a statement that must be on the hospital or the physician's letterhead. A school record. You can obtain that from the county administration office or the county board. And remember, diplomas cannot be accepted because they don't show birth records. And I can tell y'all, I've been with the state for over 10 years, but I've been with vital records this month five years. And I had not been there but maybe about two weeks when I got a call that a woman was trying to help her 92-year-old mother get a delayed birth certificate. And the reason she needed a birth certificate was she had so much money that when she moved from Florida to another state, the bank wouldn't let her open up an account without a birth certificate. Don't we wish we had that problem? <laughs> but we got her one with the work of her daughter, and one of the things that she sent was her mother's college transcript. So those are easy ones to get, and we like that one at the state. That's an easy one. Social Security. You can obtain a copy of the Numinate printout. But remember, Social Security card can't come in because it also doesn't show any birth information. And I have that phone number if you want to copy it down if some of you aren't familiar with it. It's 1-800-772-1213. You can use an employment record, a driving record, and another one we like at the state is the marriage record. This is where you can get the application that shows the mother's name and it includes her maiden name, so that's a good one to use also a child's birth certificate. If you look on here, one of the things that I put down as a note, you can only use one child's birth certificate. So for example, if I had three children, I don't thank the Lord, but if I had three children, I have one and she's good, I don't want any more. But if I had three children, I couldn't use all three children to count as evidence, I can only use one. So you can only use one of anything, one school record, one birth certificate, one marriage, because y'all know we got lots of folks who've been married more than one time. Voter's registration is one you can use. Military, 
Military is also a good one to use because it shows um, the place of birth most of the time. That form is the DD-214, you've heard of it. Insurance records, which also has to be on letterhead, and immunization. And those are used a lot of times for the children, you know, newborns or infants. We're going to give you a chart now. Oops, excuse me. And I'm not going to go over everything because I know a lot of you know a lot about this, but I at least wanted to show you over one year to three years down here at the bottom, the required number of records is two. And each of those records must be one year old or over. Remember we talked about like the immunization form? And then if you go up to the top, age 13 or older, you have to have three records and at least 10 year old of those records. So again, three records and they each have to be 10 years old. A little more detail for these three records that are required. All three of the records must show the child's full name and date of birth. Of the three <coughs> records required, two of the records must show the child was born in Georgia, and at least one record must show both parents' full names and the mother's maiden name. And if you only are required two records, both of the records must show the child's full name and date of birth. At least one record must show the parent's full name and the mother's maiden name, and at least one record must show that the child was born in Georgia. Now, one of the things I want to emphasize to y'all today is this. In the best case scenario, if you follow this to a T, if you can get three documents, everything's working for you, you send it into our office, it can take between four and six weeks to get that delayed birth certificate registered. If you only send in two and we need three, we're not going to get it done in four to six weeks. So please try to make sure that you get what you need at the very beginning, send it in with all the documents, have everything notarized, anything you're supposed to do, and that way we can get it out to you much quicker. And I wanted you to see what a copy looked like. Of course, it won't be blacked out. I did this for this poor person's privacy. But this is what the, the uh, delayed record looks like, the delayed birth certificate looks like. It shows you your information, the dates, and the the names of people who did it, that kind of thing. So has anyone seen these before? Y'all familiar with these? Okay. So do you have any questions? Nothing? Oh, good. Okay, then. The next person that I'm going to introduce is Robbie Baumgartner. He's going to talk to us about um, the Zoho tickets and gathers. He's going to give you a little information about that. in supporting you and also more importantly than that we are very capable to solve your issues take a look at that caricature do you ever feel that way <laughs> how about I do that Twenty-six years of being a technician, I can tell you that computers absolutely feel that way about human beings. And it's my job to make you feel so much better about your computer, especially your GAFRS application. What is the most important link on this page? April Cross knows that really well. What happens when you click on that link? A web form pops up, and, I'm asked, and we ask you several questions, right? What are some of those questions? What are some of those uh, labels that we are looking for? Don't be shy. Does it look like this? Who is not familiar with this web form? By show of hands. 
So you have all seen it before. <laughs> the question. Y'all changed the drop thing now. April, you are correct. Uh, last month, we made some changes to better support you. What type of questions can you report to us online? Application for new user or new facility. I mean, you can read through that, right? At the bottom, you have other gathers technical issue. And to tell you how passionate we are, if you were to send us a request that is, hey, my, the door knock on my office door doesn't work, we will not ignore you. You'll get a response back from me, check with your local facilities people. <laughs> and I really mean that. What type of issues should you not report online? The door knock? <laughs> Amendments and, and corrections. The reason why is because those require evidentiary documents. Some of them have to be original. And they can take up to four or six weeks. It says six to eight, but I think we're a little bit better than that. Now I know what you're thinking. What does it look like on the other side? This is what I get to see. The type of issue it is, and I can drill down actually even deeper than that, okay? The ticket number that many of you will then get via email. As you can see, the first two are not assigned yet. When my team looks at it, we will then assign it to the appropriate unit. So the ones that are in bold, we haven't even looked at yet. The other ones have been assigned. You can see the gap is abstract. That is the abstract unit. You have Ms. Sheila Dennis in the back. You have Beverly Gardner in the back. Those are folks that will then take your request and work on it. Any questions on that? <laughs> Beverly and Sheila. <laughs> so I am a uh, computer guy, so uh, flow charts really work for me. This is really simple. Here you are. Here's where I am. There are the other folks. And of course, you are not to report. You can't see that at the end, but amendments and corrections. And I can pretty much tell you that today, we will close most of your tickets within, uh, within 72 hours, 85% of the time. We get about 2,500 to about 3,000 tickets a month. And we just knock them out. Again, not amendments or corrections. <coughs> Search would typically come via rover. And if you sent one into us, we would then uh, uh, send it on to the uh, search unit. Yeah. yeah. They can, yeah. Again, helpful hints. Uh, your ticket number is your best friend. Uh, vital records will inform you upon completion. We may request additional information from you. And most of you guys are really helpful. All of you are really helpful. If you require an update, you can certainly go back online and reference your ticket number. Or you can, or you can call 4702 the extension at 6, uh, 404-679-4702. But your ticket number is always of, of critical value to us. Why do we need all that information? We can't make decisions unless we have facts. So if we happen to see that, you're re that, that I get 100 or 200 requests about resetting your password, I know that something is not right. We look at what time a ticket comes in, and we then measure uh, or track the ticket from conception to closure as well. And this way, Donna or Sheila may know how to, uh, how to maybe reallocate resources, peak periods, right? Uh, tax 
last season, uh, right before school starts, we get a lot of tickets, a lot of requests. And all of that data is collected so that we can help you, uh, we can help, we can improve our processes. This is a simple report of what we look at every single day. The ticket number, the unit who is responsible for, for that particular ticket, the time it was created, modified time, and the status is obviously open in this case. And the number one question that Donna's gonna ask is what? Why is the ticket in the queue for 862 hours? Pretty long time, right? Now I can tell that we had some action if you look at ticket number two, 23 hours. That means that I have been communicating with you or someone from Vital Records has contacted you. Maybe we're looking for more information on a particular ticket. Rest assured that all of those tickets we look at and we go back and find out, there are some notes that we have. Maybe we're waiting on a mother's name or something like that from you, but we don't sit back and just watch these tickets just age. We really wanna make sure that our queue is empty at the end of the day. Go ahead, April, questions. <laughs> way to possibly add where you can scan the issue, you know, scan, like a scan a copy of the birth certificate on there and show this is the issue I'm talking about? Because I've seen one in, they said, okay, we've completed your issue. No, you haven't touched my issue. You know, what I have sent to you, the, the problem is not being completed. And they said, oh, we've done everything. No, you haven't. Is there a way to scan the document so we can add it to that number? So you'll know exactly what we're talking about and what we're trying, you know, what was done wrong or what we need to correct it. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm not sure exactly what you're talking about, but you have my number, my email address. You have Joe's. Yes. If you do not get a resolution, don't hesitate. Just contact us. Again, we are so passionate in support to support you. Also, Donna spoke earlier this morning and she talked about the customer service advocate, another avenue that you can use to help you get your record registered or corrected. Yes. Um, a lot of times with like slight typos or issues that are just very minute, but now is it a requirement that they have to get all this documentation because the clerk typed in the wrong letter? Before we could send that Gavin's issue and y'all would correct it because it was a typo. But now we can't do that anymore. And when we make a mistake and our original document is sitting right there and we misspelled something or the funeral home misspelled something, but the original paperwork that we keep on file from where we're entering from is correct, but we've made a clerical error. Is there any other way to do this besides having them have to go get birth certificates and, and all this stuff when I'm, I'm just, it's, does that make sense to you? Okay. <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's a correction and I know it can be frustrating. Uh, but no matter what, even if our original document that was submitted to us has the correct information. Okay, I'll take this one. Okay, thank you. So if you made a keystroke error. Uh -huh. Yeah, the education yes, and it's fine.
Remember what I said? It doesn't even matter. We have that last choice that is other issue. We will take care of you. You can send that through gathers as well. Typically what happens is that throughout the over the years, maybe a county line has been redrawn and that's, that's typically what happens. I don't think I don't I don't think that is a state office problem, but I'll be more than happy to tell you how to look, what to look at to maybe help you with that problem. I promise to see you after my presentation. And we will solve it. We will. Any other questions? And as Donna just mentioned to us, you know, we'll, we'll try to figure out those things within the family as well. Uh, and if you have an issue with that, again, let me know. That's it, any other questions? All right, thank you. Next up is uh, Cynthia Busky Martin and uh, Andrea Dennis, and they will talk to you about security paper and website enhancements. Good afternoon. I promise you I'll be brief. Today, we're going to talk to you about security paper and website enhancements. Right now, we have some sheets of security paper being passed out. Please make sure you leave those here. We need to get all of those back before you leave. With the security paper, some of you call it birth paper, certified paper, uh, certified birth certificate paper, all the same. Donna mentioned that we only print certificates on certified copies of birth certificates on the birth paper and then we have the separation with the death paper so I just wanted to reiterate that that's very important we also um, print certificates of birth resulting in stillbirths those also go on our certified copies of birth paper 
And with the website enhancements, we hear you. What pains you all about the website also pains us. So we've got some exciting things that we want to share with you that will hopefully make your jobs a lot easier. I know there are certain things that you'd like to see and as we go through the presentation today, if there are things that you don't see up there, please don't hesitate to contact us. We really want our website to be user friendly, so we are adding some additional enhancements and hopefully again, you'll be as excited as we are about what's to come for Vital Records. And with that, I'm going to turn the presentation over to Andrea Dennis. Andrea is our Training and Communications Coordinator. Thank you, Cynthia. Good afternoon. So I have the pleasure, this is a little bit awkward for me, so I have the pleasure of uh, sharing some interesting and exciting information with you all. And I'm hopeful that by the time I'm finished, you all will be as ecstatic as we are about the things that are coming soon. Uh, I'm not gonna be before you long, but I do have just a couple of items to discuss. I wanna talk about the security features in our security paper. I know we handle the birth paper throughout the course of our workday, but you may or may not have given much thought to the security uh, features. So also I have just a few key uh, pieces of information that I wanna talk about concerning the security paper as well. But we're gonna begin, begin with the security features. And we'll have arrows pointing We'll have arrows pointing to each feature so that you won't have to search for them. So the first feature is the warning band. There's a message on the warning band that prompts you to verify the presence of the watermark. This particular feature is a security feature. It's a, a security alert feature, I'm sorry. If you hold the paper to light, you should see the presence of the word record and flag in the background. Can you see it? Okay, awesome. Awesome. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, the next security feature is called a pantograph. This is the three color iridescent print that bleed into each other in sequential order from blue, red to blue. And when the paper is printed, you'll see the presence of the word boy. Next is the barcode. Did you guys see the pantograph? I'm sorry. Were you able to see the pantograph? Okay. Next is the barcode. This is, this is an inventory management feature. Uh, basically what this means is that this particular, the barcode prohibits counties from sharing paper. The C denotes that this is county paper series. The letter S denotes that that state paper. What this means to you is that this is a unique number assigned specifically to your county. So that means that you absolutely cannot borrow, exchange, swap, or share birth paper with other counties. The next security feature is the C-clips. You should see the presence of yellow dots. This is a copy deterrent feature. Depending on how sophisticated the software is in your photocopier or your scanner, this feature will prevent copying of the paper. And in some instances, it may shut down the machine. But most people don't have that sophisticated software. <laughs> Next is the Georgia logo. It contains thermochromatic ink. If you run your finger across 
the logo, the color should fade from purple to colorless. Yes, and let's right. Cynthia and I both tried this morning and it would not change. We gave it to Joseph and it changed immediately. Were any of you able to make the color fade? Okay, we have one more set of hands in the building. <laughs> okay, next is the embossed state seal. Because the state seal is present on the paper, there's no need to add an additional seal. The seal is embossed from the back of the paper. <laughs> Well, the passport office, we explained that to them. We did have some that were returned, and we explained to them that Georgia's paper already has the seal embossed on it. I haven't had any complaints from Social Security, Donna. Have you heard anything from Social Security? But, uh, so, September of last year, we met with Social Security, and we talked to them about our security paper. Yes, yes, we can do the same thing with driver services. The, the problem is that we will have customers that will, will come to our office and they will say, well, I know my neighbor got a seal from the, from the county and theirs was valid. I need that seal too. And we try to explain to them, no, you do not. So we are trying to put the message out there that there is the embossed seal. When you look at it, most people won't pay attention to that seal being embossed. So they think it's just a picture of it or a copy of the seal, but it's really our official seal. You had a question, sir? You're asking, are you saying don't put another seal or you don't have to? We prefer that you do not put another seal. Mm -hmm. But if they did, if they did, Donna, do you want them to just go forward with that until we talk to driver services? So, we don't want you to put your seal on the birth paper because then it creates two different standards. Now, I understand when you've got somebody that's on their lunch break and they've come and gotten a birth certificate from you and then they run over to driver services and driver services is an issue. If that happens, please don't put your seal on. Please let us know. We will call driver services. send out another communique to Social Security, but we'll definitely send an initial communique to, to driver Social services. Security, and driver services, we've already covered passports. Who else are you having trouble with? The United States
big family Bible and world book encyclopedia. And after a few months, then boss seal is no more. So wouldn't it be easier for us to just all put it in the There, there are other features, and that's why we're pointing them out. There are other features that indicate that this is the certified paper. Also, if you look down where it says warning, it specifically states embossed seal. It is right. So point that out to them as well. That's so easy to overlook, but it tells us what's there. So that's our proof. It's an embossed seal. And if, if you turn the paper over and rub, rub your finger across the back of it, you should feel the indentation. The seal is embossed on the back of the paper. We all realize that. Yeah. Yeah. The problem is, it's everybody else. And then they get all up. You didn't do this right. I don't know how to do this. Yeah. Yeah. I was just saying that we all realize it. The problem is they're going out and nobody else realizes it and they're coming back in our office. So, Part you know. Of your job as local county registrars is to educate your consumers. That's and we do. Your job. We do. So we're educating you and we're giving you some of the security features and some of the things that you can help them and teach them. Have them close their eyes. I've done this with people in the front lobby. Sheila and Val do this all the time. Because we have people say, well, I, where is it? So close your eyes, and we're going to feel it. And then we have them flip it over, and they look at the indention in the back. Okay, I'm just saying, we're not even, I'm not even talking about the customer. The customer can see it. We're talking about when they get to the facility, that's where we're having a problem. And you're saying, no matter what, I'm just asking, no matter what, refer them to you because if you we're not the customer still that has, a prop, has an issue with passports, has an issue with social security, has an issue with driver services, the first stop is going to be with you. They're going to come back to you first. Mm -hmm. And then if they still have a problem, when you pick up the phone, I've talked to many of you about picking up the phone and calling driver services. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I have. have done that. Oh. I have. And so pick up the phone and call driver services and say, let me help you understand about our security. And we do, but they still have issues. I'm not going to say blast it out to all of their offices. So we'll we'll get through to them. We'll get through to them. Question in the back? Did you put something on the state website that explains the embossed seal so these people are inquiring at unusual hours or not during office hours? It's on the paper. <laughs> we can. We can. That's a good idea. I think there's a miss. That's a, that's a great we're idea. We're not Thank saying you. that y'all aren't doing your part. No, we and you're not saying we're not doing our part. We're saying that this third party out here right. has a clue, and they're not right. willing to take our word for it. Yeah. Right, I understand. I do understand. So I'm not so. trying to say that y'all are doing something or y'all are making us do more. What I'm saying is we need to somehow get it out to this third, all these third party people, mm -hmm. and I don't know how that. And the website is a good suggestion. Thank okay. you. We also talked to the vendor about making a deeper indentation. It would perforate the paper. We did we did ask that question if they were able to do that, and they said anything deeper would perforate the paper. So that's not going to happen, unfortunately. Bigger. Well, we're kind of running out of room, but 
You're talking about when you issue and it says county registrar? Well, when we issue this uh, birth certificate on this paper, mm -hmm. down in this bottom section somewhere, the court that issues signs it and puts the date and then puts the court, not the court seal, but the bottom record seal over her name. So my question is, you're saying not to put the seal, Correct. not to sign it or date it either? No, they're to sign a date. That remains the same. We're just asking that they not, not imprint their seal. The official seal is for this birth paper is the state of Georgia seal. But definitely sign it. We need that to make it a valid certificate. Sure, and we put it in our Vital Connections newsletter, but we can certainly repeat that story again. Okay, and the final security feature is also located on the back of the paper, and that is the, the alpha lines that run horizontally against the page and read Certificate of Vital Records. Okay, I'm going to move forward. I'm still talking about the security paper, but I just want to speak about... Okay, I want to talk to you about securing the birth paper. First and foremost, this paper, the paper must be secured at all times, and access must be limited to only authorized personnel. Also, the paper must be stored in the vital records office. And when we say secured, we mean that we don't only mean that the paper should be out of the view of passers-by or customers, but we mean that it should be in a locked area, such as a filing cabinet or a closet. Wherever you decide to store your paper, it must be arranged in numerical sequential order, and it must be issued in the same manner. Next, I'll talk about ordering your security paper. Paper can be ordered either semi-annually or annually, and it's $11 per pack or $220 per box of 2,000. We do not invoice for payment, so we won't process your order until we've received your payment. The address to where you should send your payment is located on the slide. I won't read it to you, but it is important that you make sure that you send it to the appropriate address. Once we receive your payment, we'll process your order within 24 hours. One thing I also want to mention about the paper, if you order paper and it's an inordinate amount of time before you receive it, please let us know. Also, if you receive damaged paper, if there's a pack that's open, if the box is open, please inventory and make sure that all of your paper is there. This paper is worth a lot of money on the black market. And if you tell us that you're missing paper, we have to launch an investigation. We launch an investigation with UPS. We launch an investigation with the OIG's office. So we, we track down this paper in the event that you're missing some. So please don't hesitate to contact us if you think it's been too long or if your paper has been damaged and the pack has been opened. We do need to know. We send it two-day, UPS, two-day shipping. So if, say, by the third day you haven't received your paper, don't think you're bothering us, give us a call. 
Okay, so we can't talk about the birth paper without also mentioning the death paper. So we've shared with you how to order your birth paper. We've also provided that information on ordering your death paper. The name, the name of the company is If It's Printed. The contact name is Sean Milligan. And all you have to do is ask for the blue Georgia basket weave death paper. Do you have to get it from them? No. You don't. We just want to make sure that everybody is using the same color paper. Unfortunately, I can't give you PMS colors. They won't share that with us. It's proprietary. But the reason I plugged Sean's information is in here is because Sean is very familiar with the Georgia paper. He says you don't even have to say color. If you just say you need the Georgia basket weave paper, he knows what you need, and he'll send it right out to you. Checks, transcript paper. It does not have safety features in it. Absolutely. Don't use the safety paper for the death certificates. The basket weave paper has no security features in it at all. Birth paper is just, the security paper is just for those certified copies of birth certificates. Does it matter if it's blue or green? If you tell, some people call that blue or blue green. So if it's close to that, you know, we're okay, but no yellow, no purple, greenish. <laughs> if you called Sean and you told him that, he'd still know exactly what you need. Now, I've talked about the interesting information. When I opened, I shared with you all that I have interesting and exciting news to share with you all. So we've gotten through the interesting information. Now I want to move on to the exciting information. And that is we are overhauling our website. We're going to give you tools that you can use. What that means to you is that we're going to give you information that is useful and beneficial. Specifically, we will have an entire area of our website dedicated to a resource area for registrars, birthing centers, and funeral homes. Each will have its own resource area. We will also make available publications and forms available in fillable PDF format, and Donna mentioned this earlier. We will also have a quick link section. We get calls from our constituents and customers asking questions or just simply trying to locate information. And this is a way to address some of those questions and just simply make it uh, convenient for you to locate information. Some of the links will include a link to each state's vital record office, a link to Georgia's vital record offices, and to some governmental agencies. And last, but certainly not least, an area of our website that I am particularly excited about is the training resources area. We have, just as an example, uh, we bought some of the Easy reference guides, which are manuals that the regional consultants use to train. We will also have available, or we will have available on our website, pamphlets. Uh, some of those pamphlets, well, our pamphlets are in the final stage of the vetting process. Some of the topics include uh, delayed birth certificates, amendments and corrections, how to order a birth certificate or death certificate. Uh, so the, inf the evidentiary information that Donna spoke about, Donna Tom Thomas spoke about regarding the delayed uh, birth, that will be in our pamphlet. Also coming will be training webinars, and another thing that I'm excited about is the YouTube channel link. So if you're not excited yet, I'm hopeful that you will be. Um, <laughs> our goal here essentially is to make sure that we're keeping you informed of news that's happening at the state office and to give you access to information and the training resources that you need. And again, I'm hopeful that by the time you get these resources and you see how useful and beneficial they are, you will be happy. Thank you. Uh, next, next is Michael Kuhn. Manette, and they're going to talk to you about the electronic death registration update. 